Getting engaged is a moment worth cherishing. A one-of-a-kind ring that you design at Blue Nile can help your love sparkle. Just choose your diamond and setting. When you've found the one, you'll get it delivered right to your door. Finding the right engagement ring can be nerve-wracking. At Blue Nile, you'll have the expert guidance needed and a diamond guarantee that ensures you're getting the highest quality at the best price. Cherish all of life's moments and save up to 30% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com. Reese's peanut butter cups are the greatest, but let me play devil's advocate here. Let's see. So, no, that's a good thing. Uh, (laughs) That's definitely not a problem. Uh, Reese's, you did it. You stumped this charming devil. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice, the leader in advanced warm-up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products, like Venom-heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperrice.com. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms, and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and welcome to it episode of news round for Anfield Index. It's myself, Dave Davis, young David Hendrick himself, I think he is off for a few days. So we do want to make sure you're updated, confirmed, get a chance to rage, rejoice, whatever you feel about the certain things that are going on with everything Liverpool related. And to be honest, ladies and gents, it ain't that quiet. It's an international break. There's 20 players headed off. I mean, yesterday there was a positive in the sense of Darwin Nunes not going to play some nonsense friendlies for Uruguay. But yeah, it's busy. So yeah, that was probably a a recap of a few days that Darwin Nunes not going to play friendlies for Uruguay. I want to say not going to because they were in Spain and France, but that's positive. So he's rested up ahead of Brighton. But the big focus has been naturally, hasn't it, about the players who are heading off on international duty and hoping they come back in a fit and proper manner. And the other thing to call out was, for the positive, Diogo Jota was running yesterday. Now, we think of injury-wise, and why I'm saying that, it's important that 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 was confirmed yesterday, that Diogo Jota and Trent Jürgen Klopp had said previously was hopeful would not be back for Brighton. But the week after, that was a hope he had or a chance to use the phrase that he did. And just to confirm, that will be against United, the next league game after Brighton. And yeah, we know how bad we want to win that anyway. So that was just a bit of quick, rough news roundup for that. And then the other thing, which sort of leads into today, and I'll jump the gun a little bit because technically it was yesterday, but today. Alex Crook of TalkSport sort of broke the story last night that Liverpool would today confirm Richard Hughes as the sporting director. So naturally it was Alex Cook, Crook sorry, that did it yesterday. So obviously the, the birds were twittering, as it were. And then this morning, all the key stories came out. What I mean by that is Paul Joyce, Chris Bascom, all your big hitters confirmed that Liverpool would announce Richard Hughes as their sporting director. And at midday today, Liverpool did release a statement confirming that Richard Hughes is their sporting director or would assume the role of sporting director. 
for the 23-24 season, as they said. Well, the end of this season, it should say. So just a couple of key things that, that came through. From the statement, the 44-year-old will join the Reds after leaving his role as technical director at AFC Bournemouth. They'd already announced him. We enjoyed a decade of successful stewardship of the South Coast Club's football operation. He will officially take over responsibilities on the 1st of June 2024, having been appointed by Michael Edwards, who was recently named Fenway Sports Group's CEO of football. The pair had previously worked together during Hughes' playing career at Portsmouth. Commented on his new position with Liverpool, Hughes said, I am incredibly proud to be offered this opportunity. Liverpool FC is a unique club and I'm grateful to be given a chance to serve it in this capacity. People rightly talk about the rich history this organisation can boast, but it's the present and future which really excites me. Jurgen Klopp is leading an outstanding team and squad, and alongside that, the commitment to young players and their pathway to the first team is also outstanding. I'm fully aware of the expectations and responsibilities that come with taking this position. It will be my job working with Michael Edwards and leading the football operations team already in place, plus the wider staff at the AXA Training Centre to make good decisions. That's really what the job entails. You have to make the kind of good decisions which enhance the prospects of having a team that wins and excites the supporters. It is what Liverpool have done well for a very long time and the benefits are there for everyone else. Edwards had also commented that was part of the official communication that I'm delighted Richard's agreed to join us in the vitally important position. I've known him for half of my life in a professional and personal capacity and he is absolutely someone who embodies the best values of Liverpool FC. I trust him completely. So that was in the statement that Liverpool released at 12 p.m. today, the midday statement. I think we knew this was coming. It was no real surprise, was it, ladies and gents? But naturally, there's been further detail in that regard. And, I mean, come on, the 1st of June. Who are we trying to kid here? Do you know, they'll already be at work and Bournemouth have already done their statement a while ago saying he was leaving, Simon Francis stepping into the role where he knows Edwards. Edwards is at Old Trafford. The preparations, things of just because they're released to the public doesn't mean they've started now, put it that way. We all know that things are fully, fully underway. A couple of other things to, to really call out. I don't need a VPN. I've got nothing to hide. <laughs> This is what I used to tell myself before I hooked up with LibertyShield.com. Not only is my home internet now fully encrypted, but I can now access all the websites I want, whenever I want, and do so from absolutely anywhere. As a Liverpool fan, I love to know I can now watch every match, regardless of whether it's on UK TV or not. My Liberty Shield VPN makes sure nothing is blocked and guarantees me super fast streaming speed throughout that match. You can get connected right now with their software package, which includes a 48-hour no-obligation free trial and instant access to their apps for Apple, Android, Fire TV, PC, Mac and Android TV. Or go a step further like I have and get one of their pre-configured VPN routers. These small but powerful devices allow you to easily connect every device in your home to VPN making it the perfect solution for smart TVs, mag boxes and games consoles. Visit libertyshield.com today and use coupon code AIVPN25 to get 25% off at checkout. From the, the few articles that have come from Joyce, Bascom, things like that, quite a few have given information about you specifically and looking at players that you targeted. So, Probably start with Joyce and Baskin mentioning this. Richard Hughes targeted, may recognise some names. Andy Robertson at Hull City. Harvey Elliott at Fulham. And pushed for Charlton Athletics' Joe Gomez during his time on the South Coast. He also identified Van Dijk whilst at Celtic and Allison when initially at Roma. Liverpool's pulling power 
and their spending stopped him pursuing those details for Bournemouth. So you never know how much his media spin, but we assume all that's true. That, yeah, it lays, it's a nice introduction, isn't it? Groundwork. Other couple of things that have been called out in the news round and articles, the Lewis Steele at Daily Mail said, Richard Hughes is believed to be heavily influenced by specifically two clubs and ways of working, Barcelona and AC Milan and their history. He's fluent in Italian and has an array of contacts in Serie A, says the piece. He is described as an Italian football nut, having grown up close to Milan. So that's a bit of his background there, mentioned in that piece, and quite a few others are quoting Harry Redknapp on Richard Hughes, aren't they? Saying that Richard, as he described in, is an encyclopedia of football, knows all the players, where they are obsessed, as it, it says, with football and that regard. So there'll, there'll be a few other things, but the key piece that also is important to mention all the articles did say that whilst officially and i'm using that word in dr evil style quote unquote he won't officially start until the end of the season you believe that if you want he'll start on or the lead on replacing jürgen klopp that's probably the key headline i would say as well people as people are alluding to as in journalists that he will be key in replacing Jurgen Klopp. Now, the three names that keep coming up in all the articles on that aspect are Xabi Alonso, Ruben Amarim, and Roberto De Zerbi. Those are the three that come up. So it's clearly what the club is briefing in that regard, believe it or not. So Richard Hughes, time to work. Reese's peanut butter cups are the greatest, but let me play devil's advocate here. Let's see. So, no, that's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> that's definitely not a problem. Uh, Reese's, you did it. You stumped this charming devil. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Hey there. Did you know Kroger always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Kroger app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Kroger today. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Yeah, first to do my ass, but there we go. So that's the, the key news from today. Second story to, to get into is that Liverpool have agreed with the Saudi Arabian Ministry of Investment to open branches of their international academy throughout the country. It does make sense largely as well. The club had started hiring multiple coaches from December onwards. So Liverpool are naturally hopeful that will have a, how would I put it, financially fruitful endeavour, so to speak, with that. So yeah, there'll be further communications and bits for Liverpool opening their academies in Saudi Arabia. Other things just to signpost that by Leverkusen, because naturally they're getting a lot of questions on me recently about Javi Alonso. So their CEO, Fernando Caro, has firmly stated that Javi Alonso will stay at the club until at least the end of his contract in 2026. He also does say, as people are pouncing on, that they have a great, a great relationship with Javi Alonso and will chat as ever, if anything comes up, but the public statement is that they expect him to, you know, stay until 2026. You can make of that what you will. And the other big thing from the news roundup, as it were today, ladies and gents, is about VAR. 
Now, it kind of links into yesterday, but the stories are still raging, aren't they, in that regard? So where does this come from? Howard Webb, doesn't it? Howard Webb and Michael Owen. Their match officials mic'd up program. So there was the incident, wasn't there, in Manchester City game where Jeremy Doku, yeah, does what he does on Alexis McAllister and no penalties given. So that was top of the show for Howard Webb and Michael Owen talking about Michael Oliver's on-field decision, talking about Stuart Atwell, VAR, and his assistant VAR, Nick Hopton. So how did this go, ladies and gents? For those who haven't seen it, I would recommend watching it. And there's quite a few stories still running on this, and specifically what Howard Webb said. I mean, first of all, Michael Owen opens on it after we watched the video, heard the audio. And I don't know whether he's taken those apple cores that he's thrown into the bin and ricocheted onto his head, but... He starts talking about in terms of when I first watch it, it wasn't. And when I have, it is. And like all, all this absolute nonsense going full political endeavour for the PGMOL. So let's turn to what Howard Webb says. He says, if the referee gives it on the field, it would have been a, a check complete by the VAR. And equally, having not given it, it's also check complete. You can hear Michael Oliver say the ball's in between the two players going together. The ball is too low to head. Doku lifts his foot to play the ball, and he does make impact on the ball. And yes, we know there's some contact on McAllister as well. McAllister comes into him. McAllister is not really playing the ball either. So I understand why it's split opinion. I think it would have been check complete either way, not wanting to referee the game in situations that are not really clear, which is what we think the VAR is in for in this situation. The VAR stays out of it. I think this is what we would expect. You want to know with clarity, with certainty, you're making the right decision. You know you don't always have sufficient information in the moment to make that decision. Clearly, Michael Oliver didn't have it in this situation. And then the VAR looks at it and doesn't see a clear and obvious situation. You see something that's subjective and therefore they stay out of it. And the feedback we've had from people within the game is that this is a pretty subjective situation. It's split on opinion. So on that basis, the VAR, you know, works into that high threshold, kind of followed the kind of the right course in not getting involved. So that was Howard Webb's statement. With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at marines.com. It's only a kick. A jump. A block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle. A run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. Survivor 46 is here, and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast, and we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Valladares, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, 
everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. What a load of shit. Honest to God. We'd respect them more if they just came out and said, we hate it anyway, but this is what we're expecting. We got it wrong. It is what it is type of thing. I mean, as Dale Johnson for ESPN, this was part of the thing that came out yesterday when the it was all on, it was three to two split in favour of Michael Oliver's on field decision. I mean, what an absolute load of nonsense. I think the other thing that that really bugs people as well is when he, he suggests it was a a coming together, you know, that the Callister was also high and that he wasn't really trying to play the ball. McAllister comes into him. Alexis McAllister does not come into him. Alexis McAllister is about half a foot, give or take, off the floor. Trying to play it. Just do try and play it with his foot or his head. You're allowed to touch it with your chest. You're just not allowed to use your arms now, just in case you're unsure of the rule. McAllister does not come into him. McAllister is not really playing the ball either. Well, again... Doesn't have to use his foot, doesn't have to use his head, can use his chest, other parts of the body, not his arms. We know that. He makes an effort to touch the ball in a fair manner. Doku's foot is raised. It's a free kick. It's a, anywhere else on the pitch. Why Howard Webb has come out with the statement he has why Michael Owen is buying... Well, we know why Michael Owen is probably less said the better in a way. is buying it. God only knows. But that is the statement. That is the absolute nonsense that they are coming out with in that regard. That was the, the big talking points, ladies and gents. Richard Hughes announced today talk of his transfer history in the news, talk about the three managers he is targeting to replace, talk about his history, his encyclopedic knowledge, links to Italy, multiple language, Howard Webb, the PGMOL, what they said on the, the docu, McAllister in the Manchester City game, that was the other one. And again, loads of peace and a bit of colour towards his background and everything like that. And the final recap for News Round, is Liverpool, as you say, have agreed the Saudi Ministry of Investment to open numerous international academies throughout the country. Yesterday was the international break. Yesterday was Darwin Nunes, we say, not going to play friendlies for Uruguay. So despite it being an international break, it is not quiet for Liverpool just now. We read you Richard Hughes' official statement. We read you... Michael Edwards' comments on that. It's clear the link there. People will have opinions. But that, ladies and gents, was the episode of News Round for Anfield Index. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds, and it means the world to the people who create these free shows. Sports Social Podcast Network.